Let's talk about Iran first. I mean, I assume you're not privy to exactly what the planning in the White House is or at the Pentagon, but you know that area terribly well. You know about deployment of forces. And when we hear that the, the U.S. is going to send a thousand troops over there, it, what is that for? What would that accomplish? Well, it could probably be force protection of existing forces, but it also could give some new capabilities that Iran might be using some new technology or they might be new, doing some new actions, and it gives the military the ability to, to counter those specifically. So when, during your service in Iran, uh, you may not have fought directly against the Revolutionary Guard in Iran, but, but they were just one step away from what was going on over there at the time. What can you tell us about their playbook? What are they up to over there right now? Do you have any doubt that they were behind the attacks on the tankers? I don't. Um, if you look at the signature, it makes great sense. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard is an extraordinarily competent force. It operates all the way with Hamas. It operates inside Syria. It operates inside Iran as we operated against it through proxies, but also through representatives there. They are very clear-eyed about strategic objectives. Iran wants to be a regional power, which is a rational objective for a country like Iran. And they use their military power sometimes directly, but more often indirectly with great effectiveness. Uh, are they under the contro control and the command of the leadership of Iran, or are they a force on their own? Well, it's different than what we have in the United States. Qasem al-Soleimani, the, the commander of the Quds Force, is an extraordinary leader in my view. He is a lead from the front, a uh, very thoughtful, hard-nosed leader, and he's probably got a role unlike any uniformed person in the United States. He's probably got more say and more autonomy than anything we would see. We've heard from Secretary Mike Pompeo that we're going to do whatever it takes to protect shipping through the Strait of Hormuz and into the Persian Gulf. Do we have the capability to do that, really, if they really want to go after ships? Well, they can make it very difficult, but the bottom line is, yes, we can. We can do a couple of things. One, we can protect shipping like we did in the 1980s. We also can threaten Iran, maybe not with nuclear attack or invasion, but with uh, force in kind. So the answer we can, it's just a question of how much effort it takes to do that. So as a four-star, one of the things I learned about four-stars is you have a larger view. It's not just a kinetic uh, conflict, actually. What should the, the, the goal of the United States be? How can we play this with the Iranians to get the objectives that we have with respect to that regime? Well, I think first we've got to decide what our policy in the region is. For most of my career in the 1970s and 80s and 90s, it was all about the flow of oil. That's not as directly important for the United States as it once was. It's still relevant for the world. But the stability in that region is very key. We have key nations that we have been allied with, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Israel, and others. And so what we've got to have is a regional picture of what we want the region to look like. And you think about that, Iran is going to have a role. Whether they are a nuclear power or not, they are going to be a regional player. And so we've got to figure out exactly what, their, what we think their role should be and understand that they're not going to take dictation from us and, and go execute that, but it's going to be reaching some kind of agreement. The same with the situation in Iraq, the situation in Lebanon, the situation in Syria. All of those are like pieces in a puzzle that have to fit together. But if we don't have a strategic blueprint of what we'd like it to look like, it's pretty hard to work toward that. How badly do we need the Europeans to be part of that strategic blueprint? Because right now they're expressing some doubt, even about the intelligence. Some of the people, particularly in Germany, are saying, we're not sure about this intelligence. Yeah, I think we need the Europeans very badly. I think we're in an age when nations in the world have got to work together. If you look at when you don't have the support, you try to do an embargo or sanctions against a country like Iran. If everyone's not on board, then the embargo doesn't work. The sanctions have no teeth.